So flying your drone over water can capture some beautiful footage and can be really rewarding, but it also comes with a few risks which could literally lead to you losing your drone. These essential tips which I'm going to go through on how to fly your drone over water safely will ensure that you don't go home with just a controller. Let's jump right in. Okay, so the first thing to bear in mind is that these drones are not at all waterproof. There are a few places such as the cooling vents where water can easily get into the electronics and destroy the drone, so it's very important to be cautious above water. If you're flying over a beach, for example, it's very important to stay well above the waves so that any water spray or even the waves themselves don't hit the drone and make it fall out of the sky. Sometimes there might be large rocks in the water which can create massive, unexpected waves near the area, so I would recommend just visually checking the area to see where big waves are likely to form before you launch. This is just going to make your flight a bit more safe and help you avoid any danger zones above the water. The next point to bear in mind when flying over water is to not fly too far out from land. Now, this does seem obvious, but there are plenty of scenarios where you might forget about this. For example, if you want to very quickly just get the drone up for a shot you don't want to miss, you could easily overlook this and just fly far away. The reason flying far out over water can be so dangerous is because of two major reasons, and the first is that you have to make sure you have enough battery to come back. Many people forget about this, and the last thing you want to happen is to have a low battery warning when you're a kilometre out from land. Of course, DJI drones have a return to home feature which automatically activates so that the drone is able to return with sufficient battery, but this system can be quite unreliable, especially when flying over water. You see, the biggest killer in this case is the wind. If you're flying out with the wind, you can experience a strong headwind when trying to fly back, and you might not even notice this until you start to return. This takes up so much more battery than usual since the drone would need to counteract the strong wind blowing against it. There is, however, a really nice trick which you can use to tell which way and how strong the wind is blowing at the drone's height. For this, you have to go over to the compass on the bottom left corner of the screen, and you'll notice a green line splitting it in half. This line actually represents the drone's current tilt, and if the line sits above the centre, the drone is tilting forwards due to headwind. If it's below the centre, the drone is tilting backwards due to wind from behind. You can also see if the drone is tilting left or right. So, not only do you need sufficient battery to fly back when far over water, but you also need to allow yourself some extra charge just in case of headwind. It's actually possible to set yourself a limit on how far away you can fly with the drone, so if you're ever worried you're going to forget, you can set the maximum distance you can fly away. To do this, press on the three dots in the top right, and within the safety tab, scroll down until you see max distance. Simply drag the slider to change the distance, and you can even view your flight restriction on the map as a grey circle. This grey circle would have a radius of your set maximum distance, and the drone would be prevented from flying outside of it. When you try to fly to the boundary, a message will pop up telling you that you've reached your max flight distance, and the drone will just hover in place. You may have heard that the downwards obstacle avoidance sensors on these drones are somewhat inaccurate, and that you shouldn't trust them. Well, I tested the precision of these downward sensors in two water conditions, above waves and also calmer water, and the results were definitely not what I expected. First, let's take a look at how the drone's readings are affected by waves and moving water under it. When hovering about one meter above the shore by the sea, the measured height from the sensors fluctuated between 80 centimeters and 1.2 meters. This is already very precise, and what's more is that these readings seem to follow the movement of the water. The height increased when the water flowed away, and decreased when the water rolled back onto the shore. So, this shows that the downward sensors are able to detect the moving water and adjust the height in real time. It's important to note that if you try to fly below 50 centimeters above ground level, the drone will interpret the command as a landing. If you do this over water, well, then your drone might land into the water. Now let's take a look at Karma Water and see what happens when the drone flies quickly over the water. You can see that when hovering over Karma Water, the height reading doesn't really change at all. Even at different heights, the measurement seems to remain accurate and constant. This is of course a great result, and ultimately what we should expect. However, it's not until we get to quick flying over water that the sensors seem to be inaccurate. I had the drone hovering at about 1.2 meters above the water and switched to sport mode so I could accelerate quickly. 
As the drone flew forward, the height reading increased by about half a meter and sometimes even a meter more than the drone's actual height. It was also interesting to see that the reading seemed to disappear for a brief moment when the drone was in fast motion and then just returned once the drone slowed down. So what does this all mean then? Well, when the drone was just hovering above the water, the measurements were very precise and barely changed. It wasn't until the drone was flying much quicker over the water that the height was shown as higher. This was most likely because as the drone flies forward, it also tilts forward, which means the sensors are also tilted slightly. Instead of measuring the height directly below, they probably measured the height at an angle, leading to a larger height being displayed. I'm not really sure why the measurements disappeared during parts of the flight, but it could be because the drone knew the reading would be inaccurate due to high speed, so it just didn't show a reading. So after the tests of the downward sensors, this is the advice I would give. When hovering, the downwards obstacle avoidance sensors are very precise and reliable, but when flying quickly or in turns, don't just rely on the sensors to measure how high the drone is. Instead, they're good to use as a helpful guide, but I'd also recommend just visually checking to see if the drone is high enough above the water and raise it if needed, especially when flying quickly, as the drone may be lower than you think. Oh, and make sure there aren't any crocodiles in the water. The final thing to remember before you fly over water is actually about the drone's calibration, and that's just to make sure that you don't calibrate the drone's sensors on a moving platform such as a boat on water. I do have a separate video on the best way to calibrate your drone, which I highly recommend you watch, but on the topic of flying drones near water, it's important to calibrate these sensors on land. Before flying, the drone may prompt you to calibrate the sensors, so if you're planning to launch the drone from a boat, for example, I would recommend calibrating the sensors on land before you get onto the water. This is because, when calibrating the IMU and compass, the drone needs a stable point of reference. Any motion during calibration can cause the sensors to be slightly inaccurate, which could make the drone not be able to measure orientation or acceleration correctly. In the worst case scenario, this could potentially lead to your drone falling during flight. So yeah, make sure to calibrate on land. So there we have it. Those were my tips and tricks on how to fly your drone over water safely. As said before, there are a few risks to avoid when doing so, but if you keep all these things in mind, you're bound to have a safe flight and capture those awesome shots over water. If you found this video helpful, then I recommend you check out my other videos which will help you get the most out of your drone flights. Also, please consider subscribing, it would be greatly appreciated. Well, that's all for today, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.